This was a triumph. I'm making a note here. Huge success. It's hard to overstate my satisfaction. Aperture science. We do what we must because we can. For the good of all of us, except the ones who are dead. But there's no sense crying over every mistake. You just keep on trying till you run out of cake. And the science gets done, and you make a neat clone for the people who are still alive. So Portal is a first-person first puzzle game, even great start, released by Valve as part of the Orange Box in October 2006 on 360 and PC and November 2006 on PS3. Uh, the game itself was a spiritual sequel to a game called Nerbacular Drop, an indie freeware game which was developed by students at a place called DigiPen by Institute of Technology. Uh, a dev from Valve saw that game at a career fair, brought the students who designed the game to Gabe Newell, the, the head honcho at Valve, who hired them for Valve to begin making a similar kind of physics-based puzzle game to fit within the Half-Life universe. Uh, Portal, as I said, is a first-person puzzle game, uh, physics-based. You play a character called Shell, uh, Chell, who's ostensibly a lab rat run through a series of test chambers in Aperture Laboratories at the mercy of a beautifully insane AI called Bados. Your only weapon to aid your progression is a portal gun, which shoots orange and blue portals onto suitable surfaces. You come in an orange portal, you come out the blue portal, and vice versa. Throughout the tests, you're reminded that your reward for completing these challenges is some delicious cake and refreshments. The game is both a perfectly balanced physics-based puzzle game and has some of the most incredible dark humour yet seen to this day in 2015 in any game, uh, and scored a Metacritic rating at the time of 90. Where do you really even start with Portal, Mark? Uh, what was your first exposure to the game? So my first exposure was Yahtzee. Um, he gave it the first glowing review that I remember seeing on Zero Punctuation. And I was going to get the orange box anyway because um, I hadn't really experienced Half-Life 2 properly at that point. And obviously it came with Episode 1, Episode 2... Um, and it came with this thing that called Team Fortress 2 that, I mean, I had just started um, university around this time uh, and I did a, a course around video game design. And so a lot of the people there were very much, because I was never a big PC gamer, but a lot of the people in my course were and they were all talking about Team Fortress. So we played a lot of Team Fortress 2 during time we should have been actually doing work, but that's a story for another day. Um, but the thing that was kind of skipped over, or I didn't hear much about, was Portal, until Yahtzee uh, had his kind of glowing review up. So that was the thing that I went straight to first, um, because I'm a person that I always just appreciate something that is completely out there, is, is a bit wacky, is a bit different. Um, and it's just, it is so entirely my kind of game. It's this short, sweet little package that... All the excess is kind of trimmed away. It has just the most genius um, dialogue. Um, the, the the just everything about Glados is, is she's still one of the best characters that's ever been conceived for a video game. Um, and the actual puzzle element of of Portal is just the way that those levels are put together are they're not entirely impossible. But when you first come into a room, there's always that first kind of like what in the hell am I supposed to do and it's one of those games that you really do feel like you've you know solved the Rubik's Cube or something when you manage to complete one of the levels um, to me like I I came at um, Portal I'd say in mid to late 2007 like I said there was a period where I wasn't playing a lot of games and kind of uh, one of the games that was the exception of this kind of like is Portal where at some point during college um, someone said to me, like, what are you doing with your life if you haven't played Portal, you know? <laughs> it's like, you know, you've got to just play this game. Fucking play it now. Jesus, play it. Um, so it went out, got it. Absolutely brilliant experience, start to finish. I always think the mark of a brilliant puzzle game is a puzzle that seems so ridiculously difficult before you complete it 
that looking back on how you completed it, you feel like a fucking idiot that you didn't see it. You know? That kind of, like... It's it's complex and simple all at once, that when you've gotten to the end of the puzzle, you go, oh, yeah, no, that was obvious, really, when I had thought about it, but until that point, you feel like putting your head through a wall. It's frustrating you that much. Like you said, I think the thing that really puts it over the top, because, like, the physics in it are brilliant, the kind of the austere kind of environment of the aperture test facility contrasts with the bright colours of your two portals is excellent. Um, the puzzles are excellent. The thing that really sends it over the top, as you mentioned yourself, is like the pitch black dialogue that goes on. And not even dialogue, but the monologuing of GLaDOS throughout the game. Kind of like, at first, seeming to kind of like slightly aid you in describing what's going on, but then as the game kind of go, uh, goes on very quickly escalates into just kind of like making fun of you at every turn um i pulled some samples from from uh, wiki quotes of some of the the kind of the great lines that glados delivers throughout the game and it's kind of like remember when the platform was sliding into the uh, fire pit and i said goodbye and you were like no way and then i was all we pretended we were going to murder you that was great <laughs> you know <laughs> then there's please be advised that a noticeable t- Taste of blood is not part of any test protocol, but is an unintended side effect of the aperture science material emancipation grid, which may, in semi-rare cases, emancipate dental fillings, crowns, tooth enamel, and teeth. Like, it is incredible. Like, just going through, solving the puzzles, like you said, feeling brilliant once you've accomplished, you feel like you've really accomplished something once you get through the puzzles as well, that you feel like you've been through something. And then just on top of it, the real kind of icing on the cake, like it would have been a solid puzzle game without any of this kind of, this humour to it, but it makes it one of the best gaming experiences I've had in a long, long time, going through this. And like you said, I think it really benefits from the fact that it is short and sweet. Um, I know Portal 2, when you play the sequel, I love Portal 2, I don't know how you feel about Portal 2, I love Portal 2. Very different game, like the the puzzles are there, but they also realise that if you just did the same thing but more without adding any kind of like interesting narrative to it that it would have been kind of like it would have worn out its welcome very quickly so I think they did something very different in different parts of that game than they did in this one so I think they realised that kind of the short and sweet approach in Portal 1 was the best way to go and like it's damn near flawless I do think that um, I, I with you I do enjoy Portal 2 it's the kind of game where <laughs> It actually could have benefited if it had come out around this time where they could have really um, taken a, not episodic approach, but it could release like small packs of like 20 test levels, uh, test chambers at a time. Because um, I just, just with Portal 2, that was the way I had to play it. I had to play it for like short bursts of about an hour at a time, mainly because your brain just goes into complete meltdown after a short period of time. Yeah. Um, one of the things really to talk about is that the the progression in the character of GLaDOS and the kind of relationship between you and her, um, I say her, it's an inanimate AI system, but regardless, there's more character progression in this AI system and a, a character that doesn't talk than there is in a, quite a significant portion of games that come out even to this day. And um, that is is really a credit to Valve and their ability to tell a story throughout you know the duration of you actually playing the game. And you know anyone that's ever played Half Life knows that Valve are very good at that kind of thing. And for them to take that sort of thing that they've done with Half Life and incorporate it into this just wacky little side project of theirs, but still it kind of upholds that high level of, of storytelling that they can do for this wacky little puzzle game um, it's, it's pretty fucking remarkable. Yeah, and I think, like, really, because it's such a nice short experience, because, like, if you have Steam or you still have a PS3 knock around, it is absurdly cheap to go and pick up the game. If you have, if you have kind of feel like the way I did with Bioshock last week, if you've managed to last, like, it's been out for the guts of a decade now. And if you've managed to get this far without playing it, you've got to stop what you're doing right now and go download Portal. Um, genuinely, it, it'd be... It is one of my favourite games of all time. And I, like, I, I really don't know what... It's hard to talk extensively about something that's just so damn perfect, really, isn't it? And the thing is, as well, if you want to take it as an entire package, you've got Portal, you've got 
this really and to this day um, you know heavily played multiplayer game in Team Fortress 2 and then you've got Half-Life 2 with its two episodic content um, packs as well in one entire package for a price that at the time was so say 40 quid I don't think there is a, a, a kind of a disc with gaming content on it that comes anywhere near close to the sort of level of quality that the orange box is and I don't think you'll ever find anything like that again certainly the level of value for money oh god especially for now I mean you could probably pick that up for like 10 quid in CEX it's just it's crazy what you get for that it is uh, it's absolutely ridiculous and I think like really before we kind of spend the next 10 minutes going it's brilliant it's great it's brilliant and running out of superlatives uh, we should probably kind of tie things up don't you think <laughs> Um, unless you have anything more to say about Portal no it's just I remember it's like because 2007 um, was the year where it's to some it's it's one of the greatest years in terms of well video games essentially Um, the amount of stuff that came out at that time including last week's uh, edition Bioshock um, it was the year that really got me back into thinking fuck me video games this this is fucking this is where it's at because i had a a few years where i was kind of drifting in and out and nothing was really keeping and holding my attention um and portal was one of those games along with the others like bioshock and like fucking viva pinata uh where i just it pulled me back in and uh i've not been able to you know get my head back over the surface since for better and for worse for a number of reasons and uh, just a live check of Amazon, you can pick up Half Life Two: The Orange Box for nine twenty nine pounds sterling on PS Three and seven pound seventeen on PC. And I'm so, thinking, if you're talking sort of hours, the the amount of hours that you have content wise, that's probably what like ten fifteen pence an hour. Yeah, it's pretty competitive. Really. And <laughs> each one of those hours is a good time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. There's not not a not a bad one in the bunch there with the orange box. So uh, I think we'll wrap things up there. 